He chose me. He chose you to follow him. And I trust today that as we reflect on the words, that indeed we will resolve to follow him. I want to welcome those who are here with us in house and those who are online. It is always a delight to have you worshiping with us at Grand Concourse. We are celebrating Black History Month. And it is always good to pause, to reflect, to evaluate, and to recognize what God has done for us. I'd like to share with you a quotation from Marion Williamson, I was watching Akia and the Bee, and I heard this quotation, and it has stuck with me since then. And I think it is relevant to us as a people. It says... Our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You're playing small, does not serve the world. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. This is our challenge as a people. As we reflect this month celebrating black history. Let us pray. Loving Father, as we open your word, we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us. Speak to our hearts now, we pray. And may we leave this place recognizing your purpose for our lives. Because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. When we go back in time and as we go through this month, we will hear so much about the past and how we have suffered. And not only that, that we have come a long way. But the fact that we have come a long way does not mean that we have arrived. We still have a long way to go. There is much to celebrate. Nevertheless, 
the residue of the pain of our past still is with us today. And to a large extent determines how we function. Most of us have experienced pain, the pain of being marginalized, the pain of being victimized, the pain of prejudice, the pain of being put down, passed over, and underappreciated. We know what that's like. And it is not easy to go beyond that. But our challenge today is that we ought to turn the pain of our past into purpose. Emotional pain is far more debilitating than physical pain. It is easier to experience physical healing than emotional healing. Many of us, we have gone through many different tracks challenges and trials, frustrations because of past hurt and pain. Many of us cannot move on in relationships, in jobs, in family because there is something in the past that is holding us hostage in the present. The question is, how do we move from a place where tomorrow is not a slave to yesterday? Where today is free and we can serve anticipating tomorrow instead of being anxious about it. How do we move from a place where we are not in bondage to the past to discovering the purpose of our lives? We need to transform our pain instead of transferring it. Let me say that again. We need to learn to transform our pain rather than transferring it. And many of the problems that we experience in relationships, in our communities, is because we have not learned to transform our pain of the past. We have transferred it to others. And when we transfer our past to others, we can never learn to get along. When we are able to transform our past, our pain, we will be able to better interact with one another.
we have problems in our families, problems in our jobs, at our jobs, problems with our neighbors, problems in the church. Problems just about everywhere. And if we stop to analyze, it is because we have not learned to transform our pain, our past. We are still stuck in yesterday. We must transform our past and our pain by not allowing it to enslave us. Many of us, we have allowed our past to hold us captive. And even as people, we tend to blame our failures in the present on the past. We blame those who oppressed us. We blame those who enslaved us. We blame everything on the past. But God's desire is that we leave the past where it is in the past. Because he has a purpose for each of us. Psalm 1, 47, 2 and 3 says, The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcast of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. I, I love the fact that God has an affinity for the depressed and the oppressed. God has an affinity for the poor and the fatherless. God has an affinity for those who are suffering. And his desire is that we repurpose our pain of the past and discover his purpose for our future. I'm so glad that our Heavenly Father, He delights in those of us who are not seen. But even though we may be invisible to others, we are very visible to our Heavenly Father. God has designed a purpose for each of us. We need to recognize today that our past should never define us. Our, our past must always inform us. Don't be stuck in the past. And you know the problem is with many of us, we just can't let go of the past. No matter how much we try, we cannot change the past. It is what it is. It is the past. Let me say something. Not even God can change the past. No, that might sound strange. Because we are saying there is nothing that God cannot do. But God does not live in the past. 
and thus he is unable to change the past. It is what it is. What he can do is he can allow us to forget the past, to transform our lives and allow us to recognize our purpose for the present. In order to be enshackled from the past, we must focus on God and his omnipotence. We allow the past to block out God and his omnipotence. And we become victims. Genesis chapter 50 verses 1 through 20. Shares with us the experience of Joseph. Joseph, Joseph's father had died. You know the story well. His brothers had come to Egypt. They had gone back home and they brought his father. His father had died now and they began to worry about the past. But now that their father was dead, Joseph's brother became fearful. Now Joseph will not show his anger and pay us back, will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him, they said. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, please forgive your brothers for the great wrong they did to you. For their sin in treating you so cruelly. So the servant of God of your father beg you to forgive the sins of your brother. The Bible says when Joseph heard the message, he wept. He wept not only because of where he was, but he wept because of where his brothers were. They were still in the past. Joseph had moved on. He had embraced the purpose that God had for his life. And the Bible said, then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, they said, we are your slaves. They said to Joseph, we are your slave. But, but Joseph said, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? What you intended to harm me, God had repurposed it for my good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. Joseph was not looking back. He was looking ahead. He recognized the purpose of the past. God in his infinite wisdom had led him through the past so that he may achieve the purpose of the present. 
He brought me to this position, Joseph said, that I could save the lives of many. God wants us to accomplish so much. But too many of us, we are still in the past. We are not recognizing the purpose that God has ordained for us. And our past, notwithstanding how painful it might have been, we need to recognize what the Bible declares that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. No matter how difficult, no matter how painful the past may have been, once we are in the will of God, he is working his purpose out. Here we find God again and again. We find the one who longs to lead us out of captivity to our place of freedom and hope. I know that this is so because I have wrestled with the past. Thank God. Once you finally surrender and acknowledge the past as the past, life takes on new meaning. Rather than focusing on the question such as why God wasn't there or why he allowed certain things to happen, Focus on asking how God is using these experiences to transform our lives into our better selves. What you want from the past cannot be compared with Christ with what Christ will provide you in the future the pain you have been running from cannot be compared with the pleasure you can run to with Christ Jesus is in the present Wanting someone from the past to treat you right can compare with God's treatment of you right now and forward. You must let go, each of us, we must let go with our preoccupation with past accomplishment, past failures past rewards and experience the pursuit pursue of hope of the new life in Christ Philippians 3 13 through 14 Paul says forgetting the things that are behind we ought to press we ought to recognize that there is a purpose, there is a reason that we have walked through the pain of the past and God indeed will deliver us into the glory of the future. Until we let go of the pain of the past, we cannot run the race that is set before us. You see, the past sometimes cripples us, immobilizes us, and we are not able to move forward and to accomplish what God has in store for us. 
And the Bible tells us that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man what God has prepared for us. When we understand his purpose, when we know our destiny, the past will dissipate. And we will focus on his promises. We will focus on power. We will focus on purpose. We must learn to enjoy what God has provided for us now without being consumed with what we have lost in the past. It is now, and if God has brought us thus far, he says he will do for us better than our beginnings. We need to understand that he has a purpose for each of us. And his purpose for us far outweighs our past. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans. To prosper you and not for evil. To give you a future of hope. God wants us to embrace what he has promised. And as believers, we need to decide and resolve to choose to trust God than try to please God. Let me say that again. We must choose to trust God rather than trying to please God. The reality is we cannot please God. No matter how we try we just have to trust him instead of trying to make up for your past failures by working hard with religious rituals your hope will please god you hope will please god god is asking for you to trust him god's promises are true he loves and accepts us unconditionally. So no matter what the past might have been, we cannot make it right except by trusting God. Rather than trying to reach God through our own efforts, let us, by faith, trust him. We need to move past our fear of the unknown into a hopeful future when you ask the Holy Spirit to renew your mind each day. then we will be able to approach any situation from a faithful perspective. In other words, focus on God's love, which drives out all fear. And we will experience more hope and discover God's purpose for our lives. Transform the pain of our past into purpose. Purpose that is built on God's promises. 
purpose that is built on the omnipotence of God, his power. We need to overcome past pain in order to let hope into our lives. Recognizing that each new day is a gift from God that he wants us to live fully. Now many of us, we are not really living fulfilled lives. Because we are living in the past. God says, step out of the past and into the purpose of the future. When, when God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel, they were excited about leaving Egypt. But then as they began to travel, they were concerned so much about the past. You see, every now and then, we will have to go through the desert. But the desert is not our destination. And they began to complain about the trip through the desert and desired to go back to the past. But what God has for us ahead is far greater than what we have left behind. But if the pain we have suffered in the past is still impacting our lives now, we cannot fully embrace the new life God has for us. Why? Because we are stuck in a frustrating cycle of brokenness that leaves us feeling hopeless. We need to embrace the past. Now, don't misunderstand me. We need to embrace the past. Without embracing our past as our past, it will forever remain our present. You may be in the darkness, but you must always look to the light with the conf confidence that hope shines eternal. We ought to be grateful and stop complaining about yesterday and understand that the same God who brought you through your yesterday is the same God who will lead you into a glorious tomorrow. Trust him. Know that he is true to his promises. Choose to be grateful for all the gifts that God has constantly poured in your life. We only appreciate the good things. We must learn 
to appreciate the not so good things. Because God has given us those things for the purpose of allowing us to grow and become our better selves. Our story must be about spiritual growth. The faith that we have had in the midst of trials. How we have overcome by the power of our Heavenly Father. Our story ought to be uh, the power to press on in the midst of difficulties. We must continue to allow our story to be the strength of conviction to stand firm in the midst of the storms. The ability to pray our way through life knowing the God that God holds the future in his hands. Knowing that you can come to the altar of God's care because earth has no sorrow that he cannot heal. There is no pain that God cannot repurpose. Our story must be spiritual so that when you look around you can see God's transforming power allowing your pain to become your purpose and through your heart and though your heart grows weary you ought not to be despaired as spiritual walk that affirms he is leading through all the stormy blast. And we have the confidence that the day of his appearing will come at last. Let's let go of the past. Let's embrace the purpose that God has for us. Let us spend time inquiring of him. What is it that you desire of me, Father? Let go of the pain and the hurt so that as you interact with each other, we can grow together in the nature and character of God. And we will stop allowing the little things to distract us and to keep us captives to the past. Our spiritual walk should always tell us that God lives, that he walks with me, that he talks with me along life's narrow way. And if you ask me how I know he lives, I can validate its promise by declaring, I know he lives because he lives within my heart. I know he lives because he has outlined the purpose he has for me. I know he lives because I have been set free from the enslavements of the past. I have overcome the pain of yesterday. And I can now rejoice in the blessings of today. God wants us to transform our pain into purpose the songwriter says God is working 
his purpose out. We may not be able to see it because we are nearsighted. But God, who sees all things, knows already what he has designed for us and with patience we will ultimately see it and we will be able to declare our aha moment you know there are times when we're going through some stuff and we can't understand it and we are locked in the past and we are wrestling and we continue to question but the time is coming when God will remove the scales from our eyes and we will be able to see his purpose and then we can declare aha now I see God is working his purpose out And the time is drawing near. Nearer and nearer draws the time. The time that shall surely be. When the earth shall be filled with the glory of God. As the waters covers the sea. Recognize that indeed God has a purpose for your life no matter the pain of the past that is not where we belong that is not our destination God will take us ultimately to the place he has promised when we get there Ellen White says we will declare all the troubles and trials of life that we have been through, it was worth it. It is my prayer today that for each of us, notwithstanding our past, notwithstanding our failures and the pain, let us by God's grace Seek the purpose that God has in store. For ultimately, because of God, our tomorrow will always be greater than our yesterday's.